time you get to my age, people fall into two categories. There are those who exercise, and there are those people who are waiting for their doctors to tell them to exercise. <coughs> I go swimming in a pool in the Bay Yaakov. Now, outside the, <coughs> excuse me, outside the pool in the Bay Yaakov, there's a, a basin, a sink, with a Natilis Dime cup. Well, when I say there's a Natilis Dime cup, about every six weeks, somebody goes out, buys one of these little grubby white affairs, and it stays there for about two days, and it vanishes. So, another six, <coughs> another six weeks go past, somebody goes out and buys another white Natalicia dime. This time they stick it through with a piece of string, two days later it's gone. Six weeks go by, somebody else goes out and buys another Natalicia dime. This time they tie it down with steel cables. And two days later, it's gone. So, about two months ago, I turned up at the swimming pool and I noticed somebody had gone out and bought this beautiful metal, like green eau de nil, you know, sort of Nile water-colored, pale green metal Natila Sidaim with these beautiful curved handles on it. And I looked at this thing, I thought... <laughs> This isn't going to last two days. This is going to last about two minutes. <laughs> so, two days later it was there. Two weeks later it was there. And poo-poo, as they say, two months later, it's still there. And I looked at this and I thought to myself, what's, what's going on here? So, I thought that it's basically a Rashi in Parshas Ekev. The beginning of Parshas Ekev, it says, Ekev tishmun es ha-mishpatim ha-eile u-shmatim rasisim ha-osom v'shoma ha-shem alokech ha-locho es ha-bris v'es ha-chesed ha-shem nishba la-avosecho that it says, Ekev tishmun, if you will listen to the mishpatim, those mitzvahs, the word akev here is a strange word. Akev really means it's a heel. It means if. Oh yeah, if you listen. But it's not the most common word. So Rashi comments, Oh yeah, akev tishmun. Im ha mitzvahs ha kalos shaodam dash ba akev of tishmun. If <coughs> you, the mitzvahs, the simple, the light mitzvahs, that a person is prone to dash ba akev of trample, with his heel, those he will listen to, etc., etc., the Kodesh Baruch Hu will fulfill his promises. And I thought to myself, you know, it's Moriheta, what we were learning last year in Gemara. A white cup, a white plastic cup, three, four, five shekels, eh, I'll take that. I'll be Moriheta. I can rationalize that. But something as beautiful as this beautiful thing, <laughs> I'm not going to take that. That's Geneva. That's what I thought. My friend, Yididi Rav Yitzhak Dala, I told the story, him, story to him, and he had a very different shot. And I'll come back to that in a second. There's a very well-known Yalkut Shimoni. Actually, no, I think I'll tell you what he said. He said, I don't agree with you. I don't think that's pshat. And he told me another story. Apparently there was a town where they had this wall in the, in, the, in the town square which was constantly being filled up with graffiti. So they put a sign there, no graffiti allowed on this wall. What happened was people had put graffiti and graffiti over the sign. So they put an even bigger sign, no graffiti allowed on this wall, even more graffiti. Graffiti banned on pain of X amount of dollars, fine, even more graffiti. So one bright spark had an idea. And rather than put up all these signs against graffiti, they got this artist to come in and make this beautiful mural on this empty wall. And the graffiti stopped. 
And he said to me, you know why people didn't steal that Natili Sedai? Because when somebody sees something which elevates him, sees something that says, you know something, this is a beautiful world. What do you want to spoil it for? Look how beautiful this Natila Sidaim is. When you're Midro men, when you raise a person up, he becomes a different person. When the, I see a beautiful wall with a, a painting and I think, wow, work of art, that's so nice. That, I don't want to put graffiti all over that. I see the world in a different way. I thought it was a beautiful shot. As I was saying before, there's a well-known Yalkut Shimoni that we talk about at this time of year. The Yalkut Shimoni describes four types of, types of Jew correspond to the four Minim. There's the Esrog Jew. The Jew, like the Esrog, the Esrog has a beautiful smell, <clears throat> beautiful taste. Taste stands for mitzvahs, smell, represents Masim Tovim. There's a Jew who smells good and he tastes good because he has Torah and he has Masim Tovim. That's the Esrit Jew. There's a Luluf Jew. The Luluf, the palm, the palm tree doesn't have any kind of aroma, but the date, the fruit, is delicious. So that's a Jew who has taste, he has Torah, but he has no Masim Tovim. His Reach is lacking. There's a Jew, the Hadas, the Hadas smells beautiful. The Basamim. That's a Jew who has Masim Tovim. He helps everybody. He's on committees. But his Torah is lacking. And there's the Arava Jew. The Arava Jew, the Arava, the willow, the lowly willow, it's neither taste nor smell. <clears throat> and it says that we should bind them all together. And Elum machaprim or elum. These are machaper on these. They, so to speak, each one, each section of the Jewish community covers the deficiency in, in the others. And as together we become the arbaminim, invincible, the weapons with which we go out to war against the, not the, the secular world. We cover each other. There's a beautiful idea they speak about in connection with Bilam. Bilam wanted to curse the Jewish people and he ended up blessing us. And the blessing that's most remembered, Ma tovu olecha Yaakov, how goodly are your tents, Jacob. Mishkan Osefi Israel, your dwelling place is Israel. And from Forsham explain that what did Bilam see? He saw the sneers of Klal Israel. He saw the modesty and the privacy of the Jewish people that when they constructed their tents and their houses, the, the patachim, the openings, were not zeh keneged zeh, they were staggered. So you, nobody could see into each other's house. There's an idea that suggested that the patachim can be understood on a different level. A petach is a petach that Bilam could have cursed the Jewish people, chas by pointing out a deficiency that we had. A petach techet. But the Jewish people, their petachim, were not zeh keneged zeh. They never lined up. So the Bilam was, it was impossible for him to, so to speak, lob a curse into the heart of the Jewish people because this one's deficiency was covered by this one's maila, this one's character elevation, and vice versa. So that's one understanding of the Arba Minim, how each one of the Jewish people are able, so to speak, to, to cover the deficiency of the other. Which, of course, makes sense until you get to the point where we have Hoshana Rabba, where we take the least of those Minim and we make a big fuss of it. The Mishnah Brewer explains where does this come from? He says on Hoshana Rabba this is Te Tafresh Samad Dalad, Mishtabura Yudalav. The Notima Rava Biyam Zeh. Zechel Mikdosh. We take the Rava on this day as a remembrance of the Mikdosh. Shinatilas Arava Hayasham Halachal Mosh Misinai. That they would take on each day an Arava. 
Chain Hayasa Mitzvosa, the mitzvah was performed in the following way. The Cholyom, Meshiva Siyomim, Hayu, Mevim Arovos, they used to bring in Arovos from the outside. The Zokfim Oison, the Kohanim, the Kohanim, part of the Avoda of the Kohanim, was to stand them up, Al Tzidei HaMizbeach, from the sides of the Mizbeach. The Hachachach Boina Om, the Noiklin Oison, Misham. And they'd take them from there and they would wave them. Mananim Oison. Ulahachi Lo Tiknu Lo Natola, Kal Shiva, and of course, nowadays that we have no base of Mikdash, Baba Nusayna Arabim. So we have a remembrance, a remembrance of this, but we don't do it like the Lulav and the Esrog, the Arba Minim, on all seven days, because the Lulav Isle Ikam in the Torah. The Lulav is something which is spoken about openly in Torah Shabbat And therefore, because it's Torah Shabbat the memory, the memory of it are performance of the mitzvah now is all on seven, on seven days. Because as we saw in the, uh, in, it says, uh, in, in the Gevulim, the Yom Rishon Hu, Minatara Afbi Gevulim, even outside the base of Mikdash, there was a mitzvah to Yeraisa for the Arba Minim. So therefore, Avdin in Law Zeichel and Mikdash, we make that Zeichel and Mikdash, which was seven days, because the Iker is Minatara. That's but the Arava, the Leisla Iker Minatara, the Gevulim. There is no specific mitzvah to take the Arava in the Gevulin, it was only done in the, mit, in the, um, the base of Mikdash. So we do it for one day. And we, why do we do it? We do it on the seventh day. There was a greater Kedusha on that day. That's the the hakafas that we'll do tomorrow, Bezat Hashem. Ki misha migdash haya gam kein yosa kedusha b'yom hazeh sharei hayu makifin sheva pamim b'yom hazeh. So that's the makor for what we're about to do tomorrow. To give the arava its own day. But of course, when we come back to the Alka Shimoni, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Because the arava is the least I mean, we certainly don't have an, an Esra day. We don't have a Lulav day. What is the understanding? There must be a deeper understanding here of why it is that the lowly Arava gets its own day. Rav David Kronglas, Zechot Sadal Levrocha, is the Mashkiach of Nei Yisra in Baltimore. He speaks about the mitzvah of Yavohavta Recha Kamocha. Judging people righteously. And he has a problem. We have a mitzvah to be don le kafschus, to judge people. The kafschus. What is this mitzvah? Clearly, it's a not a mitzvah of dibur, to go out and tell people, you know, I saw so and so walking into a, 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 a non kosher restaurant, but of course, it must have been to use the bathroom or something like that. Because clearly, you're not allowed to speak, it could be Loshan Hara, it could even be Rachilas. What does it mean that you've done the Kafschus? It's not something you're actually going to, to say, you can't speak it out. So it comes out, the whole understanding of done the Kafschus is something which is going on internally, mentally. When we see somebody doing something which is questionable, we have a mitzvah to judge them as though they were doing something which was not awesome. So he asks a very strong question. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to fool, fool ourselves? We're supposed to lie to ourselves? Here, clearly we see something which the overwhelming probability is that this person is doing something not Beseda. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to fool ourselves? We're supposed to lie to ourselves? That's the mitzvah? I'll read you his words. Amnam yesh is bone in the mitzvah zoo. You have to think about this mitzvah. Shal habidon es ha-chaber habidon z'chus. D'lechoyer akasha. It's a problem. V'chi ma ich pas im yido no son v'mach shovel l'kav z'chus. He's saying it something else. Saying, what does it matter what I think? Hello, call a mitzvah is the Betzedic Tishpah Samisecha who dova Shabbat Makshava. 
What difference does it make? And I'm going to hang on to this point because we're going to come back to it. What difference does it make what I think about some other person? De la Sape, as I said, to actually speak out, Zel Acherim, the Lava Chiyosa, that's obviously awesome. Because of Lashon Hara. And the person would be over, he would be transgressing the sin of Lo Seleich Rachel. Do not be a tale bearer. You're not allowed to tell stories about people, even if they're not damaging. Stam gossip is also. That's Rachilis. A Rachil, the word Rachilis comes to the word Rachil. A Rachil is a, a traveling salesman. Somebody who takes products from here and he sells them over there. And somebody who takes stories from over here and he's puts them over there, even if they're not damaging. So Rechilas would say that you're not allowed to actually repeat it. So if, so in came, what, what does it matter? On the one hand, for sure, I'm not allowed to say anything. And on the other hand, ma hefsid la miso. What lack is there? What difference does it make? What I think? Nobody knows about it. So lama, why is the Torah makpit on this? To dan the kaskus. And he also then says the second point that I said, the the mitzvah of judging your nation favorably, I have a mitzvah to be done some lekafschus, even if it's extremely unlikely what I'm trying to, the scenario that I'm trying to project in order to, to save the reputation of this tzaddik. A person's intellect, his common sense, says to him, What am I doing? Turning my brain, I'm doing cartwheels in my mind to try and... The Don the Kafschus part of this is absolutely the opposite of common sense. How could a person be don the kafskus bechlal? Hello, Yodea, ba'atz Moshe, ain't no emes. I know this is not true. The mitzvah hasatore he lekabel ulahachsi katzadaschus afshehu neged seichel. If the mitzvah of the Torah is to take something which is almost totally improp- impossible, in kein nimtza shehu kemarim umarame es atzmo. It's like a person, as I said, is fooling himself. A person is supposed to have intelligence, common sense, seichel yosha, a straight mind. And to conduct himself according to the laws of common sense. So why did Hashem command us this statless regal? Laarich atzmo ladun hadvarim hipuch. Why then are we commanded to do something which is the absolute opposite of hayashras, of straightness, and to distort the mind, the intelligence? This is a beautiful answer. Just as Hashem gave us many mitzvahs, Many of the mitzvahs are there to inculcate, to root deep down in our hearts. Midas tovas, good character traits, such as chesed, kindness, rachamim, mercy, chemla, compassion, chanina, va'ava, love, abrios, love of, of, of God's creations. V'chol elu nichlala b'shem echad leiv tov. They come under one category. A person, many of the mitzvahs of the Torah are there to give a person a good heart. So, Kein Nosen on the Kodesh Baruch Hu Mitzvah Achas. Hashem also gave with this one mitzvah, Achas V'yechidah B'mino, one special, unique mitzvah. Achas Shehaya Barum Hamayla. V'tachlisa Lintoya, and its whole purpose is to Direct ula hashvish b'sichleinu chesed rachamim chemla v'chanina. Its whole purpose is to implant within us chesed, 
rachamim, chemla, v'chanina. And that is, v'chol elu nichlala b'shem echod seichel tov. That is seichel tov. A Jew, the distance between the heart and the mind of a Jew has to be zero. The mitzvahs of the Torah are not that I'm seeing something over here which is highly doubtful to me, so I'm going to lie to myself. No. I have to see with my heart. I have to see with my heart. I have to make it that these mitzvahs mean that my first port of call, my point of departure, is don le kafskus. It's not something I have to arrive at by a twisting of my brain. It's that my emotion should be so set up in such a way that my first reaction to seeing a tzaddik doing something which is questionable is not questionable at all. For sure, this is something which is besaid. I don't understand it, but the Torah has been mashrish in me. A seichel of chesed. Sha'a seichel seichel shal chesed v'rachem. Ha seichel hu, ha poshet. Sorry, a seichel of a shofet, the seichel judges, the dying shedan and machria, koldova, the a seichel who tov. I have a seichel tov. My mind thinks the good. If you think about it, if we examine most of our thoughts most of the time, and really this is a bigger subject, our tendency is to don, don the davcho. We tend to look at other people suspiciously. That's what this mitzvah is all about. That our first, our knee-jerk, if you like, emotional reaction should be, this is, some, this is, this is I don't understand it, but this is good. Not that I'm suspecting. <laughs> and then, oh, no, 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 don't look up to us. That's not what the mitzvah is. The mitzvah is that I root inside myself this love, this chesed, it's not an easy thing because the nature of a person is to be suspicious of other pe people. And the nature of a person is to see other people as less than himself. We don't like people to be as good as ourselves, let alone better. Better. That's human nature. You know, I always thought that the reason why uh, America was successful and Russia, when I'm talking about Russia, I mean the Soviet Union failed, was because they worked on two principles of jealousy. And one is a positive jealousy, if one can call it positive, a positive kina, and there's a negative kina. The negative kina goes like this. Ha <laughs> comrade! You're driving around town in a nice big limousine. I'm going to make sure next week you're not driving even a bicycle. I'm going to bring you down. And America, what do they say? Yeah, okay, guy, you got a nice station wagon there. Next week I'm going to be driving around in the Cadillac. More. One attitude is I want more than you. And the other one is you're not going to have even what I've got. The nature of a person is to see other people as less than himself. Because why? It can't be that, I mean, I'm the center of the universe, aren't I? I mean. So our natural instinct is to see people in a negative light. And we have to, that's the way we think this mitzvah is, work very hard. No, no, no. Don the kaskus. That's not the mitzvah. The mitzvah is to inculcate in ourselves, and it's a very difficult thing, to inculcate in ourselves a broadness of heart, a love of people, to see that people actually do good things. That people, you know, are at least as good as me, and maybe if I can get that far, you know, maybe even people are better than me. Not an easy thing to do. How does one do this? Well, the first thing is to start noticing and writing down I'm sure, you know, if you think about it, you've saw in the last 20 years, most of you are at least 20 years old here, in the last 20 years you must have seen, seen hundreds and hundreds of nice things that people did. If I ask you to mention five of them, you'd have to start scratching your head and thinking. 
Maybe that's an exaggeration. Maybe, maybe 50. If I asked you, think of things that you saw people doing that you thought weren't Peseda, <laughs> we, could, we could carry on a lot all night with that. We remember things that people, oh, 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 this oh. People don't remember good things. So you have to start remembering good things. That's the first step to inculcating this feeling in your heart. So, you know, for example, I'll give you a very simple example. You see, there's, a, there's somebody driving down the street, street and he screeches to a halt and he jumps out of the car. Why? Because there's a little toy car that some child has left in the middle of the street. And he gets out of the car, puts it on the side of the street and drives off. It's not rescuing somebody from, a, somebody from a burning building, but it's a nice thing. Write it down. Oh, that guy did something nice over there. And then, for example, you see somebody davening really nicely in, in shakras. You know, by davening nicely, I mean like that, flailing around. I mean, you see somebody's talking to the rebellious Shlomo. You see he's talking to God. You write it down. I saw this nice thing. I saw this nice thing. Eventually what happens is you start to realize that, you know, people are actually quite nice. People are as nice as me. And the ultimate step is people are better than me. That's this mitzvah. Don lekav schus means that I have to inculcate in myself a seichel of yashrus of chesed. To uproot from inside myself my natural feelings that I'm the king of the world and everybody else is struggling to reach my ankles. Now, that's what Rav David Krongla, Seichet Tzad said. The other end of the spectrum, I found something fascinating in the Lakuti Maram. I don't know if I'll get kicked out from Osamea for saying this, but two o'clock in the morning, nobody's listening anyway. <laughs> Listen to this. Da ki tzarech ladun es kol adam kastos. Same subject. Va filu mi shuhu rosha gomu. He's going the other way. Rabbi Kranga has told that even a tzaddik, he said, even a rosha gomu, tzarech lechapes v'lim tzoboi eza ma'at tov. You have to look even in a totally evil person for something which is good. Sheba oisa hamad ein a rosha that in that little Nakuda, he's not a Russia. He's not an evil person. But Ali through this Shemotze Boy Ma'at Tov, finding this small good thing, Vadon Oso Lekavskhus, and Dunning Lekavskhus, Ali Yadeza Ma'ala Oisoi Be'emes. By doing this, you know what you do to somebody? You elevate them. Different answer to Rav Dovi Kramblas. Same kasha, unspoken. What difference does it make if I'm done the kafskus? What difference does that make to the world? Rav Dovrik says it makes me a different person. He's saying it makes Yenem, the other guy, a better person. By you looking at somebody favorably, there is some kind of mystical power which influences this person that brings him higher up he's not going to steal that in the Tillis Yadayim cup he's going to become a better person V'zeh Bechinas and he brings a posik from Tehillim V'od Ma'at Ve'ein Rasha it's a posik which means that talking about the, day, the days of the world where there'll be no Roshayim V'od Ma'at in a little bit in a little bit of time, ain Rasha, there won't be any Rashaim anymore. He's learning it a different way. The Oid Ma'at, if you find that little bit of goodness in him, the Ain Rasha, he'll stop being a Rasha. Find that little Nakuda. For his Bonanta, Al Makoimoi Ve'enena. His Bonanta, it says in the Posik, look into that. Al Makoima on the place of that Rishus, that's Poshup Shad, I guess. And it's not going to be any anymore. Hainu Shah Posig Masia Lodunas a call Bakavskus, the Posig telling you, Don in the Kavskus, for Afal Pisha at a Roya Husha Rosha Goma, even though he's a Rosha Goma, Afal Pike nevertheless Sarik Atta La Chapes, Levakesh, Limsoba Maato, Shesham, Eina Rosha, 
And that's what it means that they just said, Od ma'at ve'ein rasha. Through that, in that little bit, that nakuda, he, you will raise him up. Shesorich ata levakesh boy oid ma'at tov sheyesh lo boadain. You have to look. There's no person who does not have something, some nakuda of good. And when you see that nakuda of good, you change him. Shetzorich ata levakesh bo od ma'at tov, a little bit of good. Sheyesh bo adayin that's still remaining in him. Shesham ein arosha that nakuda. There's no rishus there. There's no evil there in that place in him. Kiyav al pisha hu rosha. Even though he's a rosh, he's a rosha. Eich efsha she ein bo ma'at tov adayin. It's not possible that he's completely evil. There's no Jew in the world who is completely evil. He's done some kind of mitzvah. Or something good in his life. Even the Arava, who's devoid of Torah mitzvahs, there's a Nakuda. And that's what's a, that Nakuda is the Nakuda of his Chelek Meloka Melamal, the godly soul. That spark of Kedusha, that spark of, of holiness that's in every Jew. That's what's so beautiful. That's what's so desirable. That's what's worth celebrating. Today on Hashanah Rabbah, where we take the Arava, which is devoid of mitzvahs, devoid of Torah, there's the Nakuda of Kedusha. There's something there. And by elevating it, we turn that Rosha. It's Hashem. We bring him to do tshuva. It goes further. As we said, this, it's impossible, there's no good, there must be a good spark there. That's what it means. You are like a judge over this person. You have the ability to judge him and raise him. You raise him in truth. By you looking at this person and seeing something good in him that sparks in him, and that's what it means when it says, in Tehillim, you still found something good there. In that part of himself, he's not a Russia. Look now closely into it. Al Makoimoi to his place for Eneno. Haino, it is his bone of the scala, Al Makoimo, or my Vrigoso. Look at where he was for Eneno Shom. He's not there anymore. He's not in his first place. He's moved up through your judging of the Danskus, down the Goskus. That's maybe what the whole of the Avoda of today is about. A person, when he looks at himself, he goes through a Rosh Hashanah, he goes through a Yom Kippur. And you know, in spite of all the work we do, you can still feel about yourself, did I really do it? How many of us really did tshuva? Especially as a couple of days, you know, they say that uh, it's not by coincidence that as soon as we finish davening Yom Kippur, the first thing we say is, Vahu racham yechaper avon, mayrev. We're very, very fallible very, very weak. And it can lead a person to Yehush. You know, what am I doing this for? He says something beautiful. He says, no, that a person should look inside himself. He should don himself the kapsulis. In each one of us, there's a chelak melaka melamal, a godly point, a point of kedusha. <laughs> and that's what we're striving for, to recognize that. As we said, 
person looks at himself and he sees that he has no real good if he's honest with himself. How much selfishness is in a person? How much self-centeredness? How much even the good things that he does are compromised with side issues, agendas as we call them. And the Yetzirah wants to bring a person down and say, eh, what are you? You're a joke. A person is forbidden to fall into these thoughts. Each one of us is supposed to look, even though we're the Arava Jew. We're in a generation of Arava Jews. We're in the heel of the Komash Lema of Adam, the heel of history. Ikvasa de Mashiach. The heel, the least worthy part of the human body, the least sensitive part of the human body. You can stick a needle in the heel, you're not going to feel it. And here's an interesting thing. The most ticklish part of a person is the foot. And that's the generation we're in. We feel nothing in a, in a, in a, in a sense of chashivas, but we laugh at everything. And we have canned laughter for everything. Everything is funny. Everything's a joke. And it's easy to get depressed. Who are we? Where are we? No. I'm the son of Avram Yitzhak Viyakov. The son of the Yushpizim. In me, and I have to find this point, there's a point of Kedusha. Rag Shetzorichle, to look at himself, this point for Av, Shemeshkemeshtachel, Lestakav, Kishemeshkel, Lestakav, Oisa, Hadava, Hatov, he sees even even these good things, as we said, are full of blemishes. Agendas, machshav zoros, external thoughts, upegoyim, in kolze. It has to be there's some point of goodness. And that's what we have to look for. Yeah. And that's what brings us out. And to realize and to look for that. Because that's what brings us out on this day, this final day of the sealing. Where it's easy to get into a state of of Yeush. Yeush shalom idas. Yeush is not logical. Yeush is where you lose your das. The Arava has nothing. The Ramban asked at the beginning of Pasha's Lech Lecha that Avram Avinu, so to speak, springs onto the scene of world Jewish history without any prior announcement. The Torah doesn't mention his milers. The Torah doesn't mention his avodah Hashem. Lech lecha. Leave, and I'm going to make you into a great nation. Why? Why doesn't the Torah spell out for us why it was that the Kodesh Baruch who chose Avram Avinu from all mankind? Behiboram ba Avraham. Avraham was the world was created for Avraham. A sort of person like Avraham. Eloto de Shemayim ba Aretz behiboram ba Avraham. The Maharal answers the Ramban's question and says that if the Torah had stated prior to Avraham's appearance his milers, his Reasons for his choice, then one might think that the reason of his choice depended on those milers, and the choice of the people depended on those excellences, and if Chasva Khalil, the Jewish people, would sink to a point where they no longer exhibited those excellent character traits of Avram Avinu, then the choice would be revoked. It would be an avashat atluya badava, a love which depends on something. And as we know, in all kinds of love, once the reason of the love has been taken away, if it's a love that depends on a specific reason, if the reason is taken away, the love collapses. And so, HaKadosh Baruch Hu showed us that he loved Avram Avinu 
בעצם. Because, because, because he was. Because, of, because. Zero distance between cause and effect. You know, it's like I remember as a kid, there was this shoe shop. You used to go in the front, in the door of the shoe shop, and it had two mirrors. And you, you, know, you could stick your foot out and you'd see like mirrors, right? hundreds of thousands of feet going in either, either direction. Reflecting mirrors. There's no distance between cause and effect. That's true love. The reason is because, 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 because. There is no because. There's no cause and there's no effect. There's zero distance between cause and effect. That's real love. That's the love that Jewish people have. That the Kaddish Baruch has for the Jewish people. The Kaddish Baruch showed Moshe Rabbeinu a storehouse full of schar. Huge storehouse. And Moshe Rabbeinu said to HaKadosh Baruch, who is this for? And Hashem said to him, this is for the people who have no schusim. These are for the Arava Jews. The point of the Kuda, when we really get down to it, and we understand, and maybe that's what he's talking about over here, when we really have to understand who we are. The Kotzka Rebbe said that if a Jew understood what it meant to be a Ben Olam Haba, what it meant to be a son of Hashem. He, he ran out in the streets and started doing a, a, a gazatska, a Cossack dance. He'd be so happy. We're surrounded by things which bring us down, by our own feelings of shortcomings, by Bechlal depression. The statistics for depression is like something like two in every ten children in America, school children, uh, have depression. And we're not talking about you know, like a bad hair day. I'm talking about you know, serious medication. It's something which besets us. Low self-esteem. I don't have time to go into it now. We have to understand that Hashem loves us. He created us. He wants us to succeed. And even if we seem to be messing up in every area, there's a point inside me, that point of Kedusha, which is my contact with Hashem, which is the Chelek Melekal Melamal, which is completely pure, which is worthy. I'll end with a story. A friend of mine called his son uh, Kadosh. Came named Kadosh. Power of names. They were on a, a bus to uh, B'nai Brak, I think it was. And the child needed to relieve himself. And the bus driver wouldn't, the driver wouldn't stop. So they get to the, off the bus in B'nai Brak or wherever it was. And they're rushing down the street and they're looking somewhere to use the bathroom and they come across this bar the pub so my friend's about to, to drag him in there and, and, and to use the bathroom he's bursting and he looks up at this place he's, he's never seen a place he says what is this place he says it's a Beit Marzeach it's a pub and he explained what it was he said I can't go in here I'm Kadosh Kadosh Baruch Hu should bless us, that each one of us should reach down in the davening tomorrow morning and find that Kesha that we have with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, which cannot be sullied by any kind of depression, any kind of negativity. And we should take that Koyach, the Koyach of the Orova Jew, the Koyach that even though we know we're bereft of almost everything, but we have the most important, important thing in the world. We're an Am Kaddish. We should look at ourselves. We should look at other people. We should realize the power of our ability to don the kafschus, to change our interior mental workings that we see people who are, people are as least as good as us, if not better. And with that generosity of spirit, that should replace the negativity and the selfishness which comes to us second nature. And with that effort to change ourselves a little bit and look at ourselves and the whole world and to don the world at Bechaschus, so Kodesh Baruch Hu will be don us, our families, and all Klal Yisrael for year of bracha, health, hatzlacha, and kirvis Hashem. Amen.